So far we've seen that parole and pyridine are good examples of electron-rich and electron-poor heterocycles, respectively, and we can trace this back to the nature of the nitrogen atom within these structures. The nitrogen in parole looks like an electron donating group, an N3 nitrogen, while the nitrogen in pyridine, an N2 nitrogen, resembles an electron withdrawing group. In this video, we're going to look at other examples of electron-rich and electron-poor heterocycles and generalize this idea that when an electron donating group appears within an aromatic heterocycle, the ring is electron-rich, and when one or more electron withdrawing groups appears within an aromatic heterocycle, the ring is electron-poor. Recall that we identified the N3 nitrogen in parole as an electron donating group. It's a heteroatom that bears a lone pair capable of occupying a p orbital and participating in conjugation. Parole's aromatic ring is electron rich because it contains an electron donating group within its structure. Other aromatic heterocycles that contain analogous electron donating groups within their structures are also electron rich. For example, furan is structurally analogous to parole where the NH group is replaced with an oxygen. And in furan, just as in parole, we can and should think of the heteroatom as an electron donating group. Here are a couple of curved arrows that illustrate donation of electron density from the lone pair participating in the pi system toward the carbons of the ring. This makes furan an electron-rich ring just like parole. The sulfur analog thiophene is another nice illustration of this effect. The S2 sulfur atom within this structure can be considered an electron donating group. And curved arrows like this illustrate how the sulfur's lone pair donates electron density toward the carbons of the ring. This makes thiophene, like furan and parole, an electron-rich ring. The key in general is that all of these rings bear what we've previously identified as the general structure of an electron donating group, a heteroatom with a lone pair that can participate in pi conjugation. Electron-poor rings, such as pyridine, contain an electron withdrawing group within their structure. Recall that we previously identified the general structure of an electron withdrawing group as an XY double or triple bond where Y is more electronegative than X. Within a ring structure, Y would also have to be connected to something else. We find that structural pattern within pyridine in the form of a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And this is a very common specific example of the general electron withdrawing group pattern that we find within aromatic heterocycles. The oxygen analog is worth looking at, but it tends to be less common because the oxygen atom in this structure is necessarily positively charged. This molecule is called a pyrillium ion, and one way to think about it is it's just pyridine with one additional proton converting nitrogen to oxygen and the same number and arrangements of electrons. This molecule is isoelectronic with pyridine. Curved arrows in both of these cases involving shifting electron density onto the heteroatom, which is electronegative, illustrate how the heteroatom withdraws electron density from the carbons in the ring, making the ring electron poor. Other important examples of electron poor heteroaromatic compounds often contain multiple nitrogen atoms. For example, this molecule, which contains two nitrogens directly linked together, contains two copies of the electron withdrawing CN double bond group. There are other isomers of this general type of structure which have the nitrogens in different positions. For example, there's a para-like isomer with the two nitrogens in para positions with respect to one another, and there is a meta-like isomer with the two nitrogens in a meta-like relationship to one another. All three of these structures contain two copies of the electron withdrawing CN double bond group. And for all of these, we can engage the internal electron withdrawing group to show how the nitrogen atoms withdraw electron density from the carbons in the ring, making the ring electron poor. These three types of aromatic heterocycles containing two N2 nitrogens and the rest carbons within their structures are known as diazines. We'll look at them in a little more detail in the next video. To summarize, keep in mind that electron poor rings can be identified by the electron withdrawing groups within their structures. When we say electron withdrawing group, we're using the definition of a resonance withdrawing group that we've seen previously in discussions of conjugated dienes and substituted benzenes. Electron rich rings can be identified by the presence of electron donating groups, specifically resonance donating groups within their structures. 
and we've previously identified these as well in discussions of conjugated dienes and substituted aromatics. One final point to make is that some heterocycles that contain multiple heteroatoms can contain both electron donating groups and electron withdrawing groups in their structures, and in cases like this it can be a little bit difficult to tell whether the ring is electron rich or electron poor overall, since the heteroatoms are having opposite effects. Additionally, substituents can modify the electron density within heterocyclic rings just as they can in benzene rings, and so for example the presence of an electron withdrawing substituent on, say, a thiophene or furan can pull electron density away from the ring. And here again, determining whether the ring is electron rich or electron poor overall can be a little bit ambiguous. I don't want you to worry too much about the influence of substituents in multiple heteroatoms. I only bring this up to make you aware that it's important to pay attention to all of the heteroatoms within rings containing multiple heteroatoms and any substituents linked to even the heteroaromatic rings that we'll come across.